Hi there! In this session, we are going to use some functions which are very related to the integration operations in MATLAB. And we'll start with the function sum, which computes the summation or the total of values in vector or, ma or matrix. For example, let's define the, a vector as x from 1 to 5. And we can calculate the sum of this and the result is 15. And it's equivalent to the integration in the discrete domain. And we know that, for example, in the discrete domain systems, the integration converts to the summation. And if we'd like to calculate the cumulative sum, we can call com sum of x and you see that this is the summation of first element to first element first to second element first to third element first to fourth element and first to the final and fifth element and you see it's a cumulative sum of the original array and that can be interpreted as a discrete integral of the vector with the space of one between every sample we can calculate the sum or com sum in specific direction of matrices. For example, let's define y as reshape of 1 to 13 and it has five rows and we left the number of columns blank as empty matrix and let the MATLAB to find the appropriate number and it finds six columns and five rows and if we calculate the sum of y it will calculate the summation along the first dimension and that's the row and it will move on rows and calculate the summation here and that's an integration and if we'd like we can call com sum and that's almost the same and the last row is exactly equal to the output of sum function. However, if we like to move on columns, let's have y again, we can calculate the sum of y on second dimension and that's it. It's the summation of these values located on each row and if we calculate the com sum of this, we get the cumulative sum along the moving along the columns and that's it we calculated a discrete integral of a matrix and we can for example calculate the sum of sum of y2 and that's the summation of all elements in y or simply sum of y which is flattened and converted to a column vector and that's it it's a shortcut and you can use it to calculate the summation of all elements of a given matrix and if you like you can compute the value of some integrals using the sum function for example let's calculate the value of integral of a sine function from 0 to pi and we know that the value of integral is 2 we know that the value of this integral is 2 from 0 to pi the sine of x dx equals to 2 or we can just calculate up to half of pi and we'll get 1 let's calculate the value of this integral let's define x linear space from 0 to pi divided by 2 and 100 points here and we get this we can put a semicolon here to suppress the output and we can calculate y as sine of x and if we calculate the sum of y we'll get this and we know that there is a dx here difference of x and a delta x say and that's the difference between x2 minus x1 and that's it and if we calculate the sum of y and multiply it to dx we'll get a value very close to dx however i think we must neglect the last element and we can neglect it and it's almost close to a one the exact value of the integral and if we increase the number of these points 
we'll get a better solution. And it's possible to calculate such integrals using another function, which uses trapezoid summation to evaluate instead of the normal summation we used. And next we have two functions, traps and contraps. Traps equals to the sum function, but uses the trapezoid summation here. Let's, for example, have this function. And if we calculate the trap sum of this, we'll get 12. And that uses the trapezoid summation. If you would like, you can see the documentation and the algorithm behind the calculating of this. Uh, it's here, you can get a comprehensive description of the method. If you'd like, it's highly recommended to read this documentation. However, let's redefine x and traps x and you can come traps just like come sum and sum we have traps and come traps of this x and the last element is equal to the output of traps 2 okay let's calculate the value of this integral using traps we can define x as linear space from 0 to pi divided by 2 and 100 elements and we define dx as x2 minus x1 and we define y as sine of x and we can use traps to calculate the value of summation of y however we can pass the values of x here to calculate the integral and that accepts the value or we can just pass the value of dx that's enough. We can just pass the value of delta x or dx and it uses this or we can calculate the value of dx times traps or traps times dx and that's the same. So this, this and this are equivalent given that x holds the values of integration variable, the independent variable with equal spaces between them and that's necessary condition for inequal spacing you must call the traps in this style and you cannot use the fixed spacing because of the variation of the spacing between samples so you see that we use the traps to calculate the value of integral here and we can calculate the values for double and triple integrals by nested and consecutive calling of traps and contraps functions. Let's call the contraps also to have the value of this integral. You can see that this is the value of the function, and you see that this is the integral of the function, and you can plot it against x and y. So, for example, let's calculate this as z. And if you'd like, you can plot y versus x, and that's it. And you can hold on and plot z versus x, and that's it. That's the value of integral of this function. And we know this is somehow related to the cosine function. It's a 1 minus cosine. And that's it. We use the traps and contraps to calculate discrete integrals or approximate the values of continuous integrals as well.